The Jewship and the semi-submersible can operate at about the same water depth. But the Jewship costs about a million dollars while you can get some semi-submersibles for as low as $250,000 a day. Yet, contract drill ships to come operate while we have semi-submersibles in the market. There are reasons why this decision is or was made. But while we think about it, why don't you hit the subscribe button below as we proceed. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ugo Koli, and today we'll be speaking on drill ships. We want everyone to understand reasons why we particularly select the drill ship to go operate instead of the semi-submersible. We'll start off with the introduction, talk about the merits and demerits um, of the drill ship, Sp look at the deck plan, look at the modes at which we move the rig to location, talk about station keeping, look at examples of drill ships, then we'll round it off by looking at the rating and classification samples of a drill ship. So jumping right straight into it, um, to the to the right, this is what the drill ship looks like. And immediately you can see that one of the demerits of the drill ship it has is less stable compared to the semi-submersible. The drill ship is very unstable. This is because like a vessel, it, 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 the forces, the waves of the water makes it observe all the, all the movements that it can get, like the roll, the sway, the surge, the heave. Positive thing about the drill ship is that it has a very large deck space. So in the event that you plan to drill with the, to drill far away from the shores, it is only smart that you pick up the drill ship, move as much as you can with the drill ship, and in some way that reduces your logistics cost and that reduces the amount of times that you have vessels, supply vessels, get supplies and equipment from the shores to the location. So it's beginning to add up why some, why some of these decisions are made, choosing the drill ship over the semi-submersible. Then another another advantage of the drill ship, I just mentioned, in remote areas, far away from the shore, you don't have to worry about constant getting um, the vessels, moving them constantly to come supply. So quickly, looking at the details of the merit and demerits, um, the drill the drill ship can store a lot of supplies. We already mentioned that, and they can operate in deep depth. But however, the semi submersible can also do that. They can be dynamically positioned or moored, like the semi-submersible, but the main advantage, like we said in the other slide, is that it can operate at remote locations. So what that does is that it reduces your logistics cost in some way. What are the concerns of the drill ship? Because of, it is a ship, I mean, it's just a ship with, um, with, with that has the rig installed on it. It still gets, it still has issues with regards to stability. They are harder to maintain. It's a vessel. And because of that, you need a very experienced crew to man the vessel. I don't want to speak about the environmental forces that can affect it in very rough weather. We already spoke about that in the slide. In the other slide, it's, it's, it really can get really, really bad when you're using a drill ship in, in, in a very adverse location. So in summary, to wrap that up, speaking to a layman, if you have, you are going to be operating in, a, in an environment that has very, very rough weather, ladies and gentlemen, it is advised that you contract a semi-submersible. However, a detailed cost-benefit analysis would have been done. You have to factor the cost of other, service, or other services, factor the cost of your logistics, and holistically make that decision. If you will be operating in a very remote area where you need, that, where, I mean, it's very far away from shore, where it might take a couple of days for any any vessel, any supply vessel, getting um, products to you, getting your supplies to you, guys, you have to think of getting the services of a drill ship. That way, you would have moved a lot, and what, what you need to move 
as per supplies will reduce significantly. In that case, you will need to contract a drill ship for your operations. So I guess that pretty much makes it clear. In rough environments, get the semi. In calm environments, well away from the shore, get the drill ship. So this is what um, the drill ship looks like. Looking at the, the plan view, this is where the moon pool will be. You have your generators around this end. You have your, your lockers. You have the galley, the mess room, and pretty much the early deck is going to be around here. Looking at the middle deck, you have your pilot house here. You have your draw works. You have where your pipe racks will be racked. If you're getting kissing on board, you have enough space to rack them here. Then your windlass, which um, helps to moor the rig. If this is going to be a drill ship that will be moored, this is where you have your windlass. Then um, finally, at, at bottom, you have tanks positioned all around. And if you notice that some of the tanks are pretty much kept empty, this is because the density of the fluid that you're going to be storing in the sides of the tank matter, so that you're able to keep the the you're able to keep the ship stable and not have it leased to any direction. So there are different tanks. You have tanks where you keep drill water. You have tanks where you keep that you keep void. You have tanks that you keep fuel. It is it is and it is also it will you it these tanks will be used to ballast the rig if required. So this is um, speaking about. Um, station keeping of the rig this is the rig when it's being moored um, you have the windlass somewhere at the back and you can see the you can see the lines with the anchors on bottom then you have um, to the right you have the rig dynamically positioned same um, same method as I mean it has the same control system like that of the semi that we spoke in the other in the other in the other video so I put that up here so that we have um, we see it again and understand clearly. So you have your current forces moving the um, the drill ship. In this case, a semi submersible shown here. What happens? So we have input the position and the heading of where we are, which is which is like the address of where we are into the feed that's fed into the control system, which is passed on to the optimization trust allocation. Now it's a closed system. What happens is. There is constant communication all around. By the time current forces, current wind and wave forces act on the vessel, and for some reason it moves away from position, it passes that message to the control system, which passes the message to the terminal system of the terminal control system of the of the dynamic system, which passes information to the trusters. Uh, hey guys, we are not where we should be. So that information is passed on straight to the truster and the power system, which powers on the truster and the truster nudges the rig back on location. And that passes the information back to the position and heading reference system that, hey, guys, we are back where we should be. Any further deviation, that loop continues, passes that information to the terminal control system, which passes the information to the dynamic, to the power, to the power system and the trusters. And that happens again to keep the rig on it switches on the trusters and that happens again it moves the rig and gets and gets it back on location so um this is the examples of what the drill ship looks like you have the deep water part find out to the far to the far left you have the discoverer spirit here and you have the gsf rf bar so thank you very much everyone thanks for listening to the topic um thanks for getting to this end please do not forget to share do not forget to like do not forget to comment and most especially subscribe again i'll repeat it is only when you subscribe that you get notifications when we have new videos on this channel once again thank you all for listening and bye for now